The Federation of Ghana Beekeepers Association reports that despite 70% of the country's vegetation being conducive to beekeeping, over 60% of the honey used in Ghana either for consumption or manufacturing is imported from foreign markets like Burkina Faso. In an effort to boost beekeeping locally, the women and youth in beekeeping and value chain Ghana have received a grant from Cotvet. A development fund to train young Ghanaians in this venture. It follows Joy News's recognition of the founder Richard Mensah Oko as an impact maker in agriculture and social welfare in June this year. There's more in this report by Esther. Beekeeping, the art of tending bee colonies to harvest product like honey, bee wax, honeycomb, and the likes present a lucrative opportunity for Ghana's economy. Despite the favorable vegetation for beekeeping, the lack of attention in this sector forces reliance on foreign markets for honey consumption. It is to fix this challenge that Richard Mensah Oko founded the Women and Youth in Beekeeping Value Chain Ghana. This initiative, among many others, won him Joe News Impact Maker Award in the area of agriculture and social welfare in June this year. Following the recognition and to expand his work, his organization secured funding from COVID to train more young people in beekeeping. So I'm going to remove some of the uh, top bars for you to see what is in there. See, this empty comb. The comb is empty. They are now filling it with uh, honey. At a week-long training for young beekeepers at the University College of Agriculture and Environmental Studies at Bonsu in the Eastern Region, Richard Mensah Oko emphasized that with proper investment and support, Ghanaian beekeepers have the potential to produce the best honey in the world. We are not there yet, but from what I see recently, it's encouraging. Awareness is gradually growing now. A lot of people are now going into beekeeping. You have graduates coming, talking to you, asking how, how can they start? And it's, it's, it's inspiring to me, because 20 years ago when I started the Inkrasen Techman Beekeepers, we were just a few people, and most people didn't know. But now, people call. Not that we go to them. Formally, we go and explain. Those who are said will accept. Now, people call and they are ready to pay you to come and tra train them. So it's encouraging. But we are not there yet. We need to do more as a nation. We can supply the best quality honey on earth. They talk about uh, Manuka honey. I tell you, we have some type of honey. If our scientists come in with all the analysis being made and then the marketing and showing it to the world, we'll beat the highest quality honey right now on it. Yeah. Ghana has everything it takes to produce the best quality honey. The COVID fund will be used to train a minimum of 200 beekeepers to promote honey production. It gives further explanation into the nature of the training. After here, in a week or two, we will organize another training in, in Kransa, and members from Kransa and Techima and surrounding communities will be invited to be trained by the 10 people we selected. Under this project, what we choose is the tra training of trainers approach, meaning we selected 10 members of our association, brought them here for that intensive training, and then they will go back and train the larger members in the various communities. So directly, these 10 members who have been trained will go back and train at least 45 people there, direct training. And our training is that when you are trained, you are encouraged to also go into your villages and other communities to train more. So we estimate anyone trained should at least train about five people. We are looking at training not less than 200 to 300 farmers, benefiting from this support from Codvet and Ghana Skills Development Fund. Okay. And the 55 train, I also expected to at least train oh, five yes. people. Because you can't keep the training to yourself. Okay. You must tell others about it. So one lady should demonstrate how best 
you can open the hive to protect yourself as a beekeeper. The program facilitator, Michael Sechi, guided trainees to the correct methods of harvesting. One lady should demonstrate how best you can open the hive to protect yourself as a beekeeper. Clap for her. Uh -huh. So she's able to open the hive at the right way. And you can see that uh, Salina or Victoria is also operating the smoker very well. So try to puff another one into it for us to see. Mm -hmm. no, no, down there. Down, down. Mm -hmm do it so as she's blowing the distance the smoke into the hive it drives the bees to the other side for you the beekeeper to have access to everything that you want to assess in the hive okay so i'm going to remove some of the uh, top bars for you to see what is in there This is empty comb. The comb is empty. They are now filling it with uh, honey. Please blow the smoker. Mm -hmm. You see, this part is honey. This side is also brood. That's their egg. And this place too is empty. So this is the brush. You can see clearly that the bees are working very serious. All this area is honey which is covered or capped. So this part is honey. This part is empty cells. So they are here to uh, fill it with honey. In a hive, we can divide the bees into three. We have the queen, who is responsible for reproduction. So in a day, the queen can lay 800 to 3,000 3, eggs a day. So she's responsible for reproduction. The queen lifespan also uh, lasts from three years to four years. Then we come to the worker bee. The worker bee, their population range from 70 to 80% of the entire population. The worker bee, they are responsible for uh, protection. So you get under the worker bee, you get the gas, you get the temple clean, cleaners, and the foragers. You see, they build the combs from uh, use, by using wax. They secrete the bee wax from their thorax to build the uh, combs. Uh -huh. So after building the combs, then they decide to lay egg, the queen lay eggs in some of the combs. The workers fill the empty combs with uh, honey. Then everything moves on. Some beneficiaries shared some of the skills and knowledge they have acquired. As I beekeeping, what else do you do? I'm a student of Incarnate Technical Institute and I study fashion and designing as my course. So why beekeeping? Because I like honey very much and I'm very interested in beekeeping. So when I heard that they are having this kind of training, I told my dad that I want to take part in it. And I part their interview and here I am today, learning beekeeping and learning it not by myself, but I want to explore, I want to teach others how to do bee. Yeah. So what are some of the things you've learned so far from this training? Uh, I've learned that in a certain box they have only one crane 
in it in a box and they they feed the queen with um something called royal jelly. Yeah, and they have three types of bead, the worker, the drone and and the queen. How long have you been doing beekeeping? Um, I think five years. My parents are in so half my parents are not around, I have to join the organization. Oh, I have learned how we should keep the bees so that they can produce honey for us and how they help our crops too. How the bees, they produce honey and what they can do to protect our crops. Sometimes they help the crops too when they are doing closing. Like if you are having cashew, and other different fruits, they do closing for you so that the fruit can be collected. Uh, first, what I said, um, now I'm a herbal practitioner, and I derive with the passion or the knowledge from beekeeping through some courses and then uh, learnings. Because uh, we normally take a hotness from the fruit, that's the bush, and then others. And then we normally to uh, we take the honey as a medicine. Mm. Yeah, so there are some medicines that I, I always use honey to prepare it, or I just add honey to it, and then some uh, herbal, herbal, herbal products too. So just like um, it's a it's a good food. Richard Mensa Oko expressed gratitude to Joe News for recognizing him as an impact maker. He acknowledged that the award significantly contributed to securing the grant for training these young individuals. After the award, I've had a lot of community people calling me to go OT region, Eastern region, other people doing the training, and it's strengthening me, building me. So when it comes, it was a time of writing the proposal. It was very easy for me. Actually, I didn't need an intermediary. I wrote the proposal myself. Unfortunately, we got a funding, and thanks to join us. As we are here today, we brought two new people that I have not known them before, but they've heard of us, and they are here. Now, when you go to Mkransa to other places, people who were part of the association earlier and left are coming back. There are also others who were dormant, they are awakening. Because that they can, we saw you on TV. Hey, you have to see it's grown. It's not big. Oh, then let's do something. And it's well structured now. Mm. New members are coming in. Invitations are coming in from other places. So it's increasing our membership. It's building our capacity. That's why we are here. Great benefit. And it's also increasing our finances because people have to pay registration dues and all that. He called on youths to seize the opportunities within the agricultural sector. Agriculture can help this nation and everybody is encouraged, is so broad to at least adopt one or two aspects of agriculture. You want to go fishery, you want to go poultry, you go to the tubers, you want to go to the palsy, you want to go into fruits and vegetables, horticulture, so much you must do something. You can even take beekeeping alone. Then you don't need that much land. Get your house under some tree somewhere, you are good to go. You could even buy the products from your farmers and also market for them because they are looking for ready market. So maybe you are a digital marketing manager, whoever. It doesn't matter your age. You could also buy for it. The 10 trainees who benefited from the program are expected to train 45 others in their various communities. Eston Kromer's report for Joe News. about charity and reaching out to the less privileged in the spirit of Christmas and giving over 1,000 uh, Christmas the Christmas of over 1,000 children was made perfect and complete this festive season when the Gifty Auntie Foundation adorned their feet with beautiful Christmas shoes the exercise that happy feet is among others 
among other things, uh, seek, it seeks to actually ensure that aside from the Christmas meals, drinks and parties, children in very deprived communities in Ghana have decent shoes to match their dresses as they step out to socialize with family and friends as well as to church. Let's get in touch with the brain behind the Happy Feet initiative for a better appreciation of the entire experience uh, for both the donors and beneficiaries. And joining me via Zoom is Ohene Yuri Gifty Auntie. She's a founder of the Gifty Auntie Foundation. Merry Christmas to you, Gifty, and uh, many thanks for joining us. Merry Christmas to you too, Aisha. Good so, to see you, and thanks for having me. Tell, tell me more about reaching out to the needy uh, children on, on Christmas, and why Happy Feet? Well, it started six years ago when, um, thanks to um, God for bringing me to Edumasa, I came face to face. I knew that there's poverty. I've had a challenging upbringing. I've been growing up myself. You know, I always tell the story of how I used to say, Christmas is coming, New Year is follow, Christmas is Papa by Super, but sometimes you choose, don't come, but you'll get a pass on from Big Sister or somebody. And then I get to Dumasa and I see these kids, Christmas time, they are going to church and you look at the shoes they wear, the clothes they wear, I decided to do something about it. The first year I started, um, I thought it was just for the children of Edumasa, but if you know Edumasa, there are about 10 villages and communities around and all the children came. And first year, second year, third year, we added Akwemufiye to it. And then um, the year after, we added Central, we added Volta, we added um, Upper East, Upper West, and uh, Mashanti to it. This year, hmm, we've been to Ketekrachi, we've given to Ketekrachi, we gave 100 shoes to Ketekrachi, Village of Life, um, which houses survivors of child trafficking. We went to Jopo, Jopo in the Shai Osudosu, uh, Doku area. They were greatly affected by the spillage. We went to Mepe, and now we are at Edumasa currently. Um, yesterday, the day before 24th, when I got here, on the way, children were running after my car because apparently they've been waiting we oh, served about true. five communities so far. We've given 600 shoes. God willing, I'm back in Accra tomorrow. We'll give some to the Muslim community for New Year. And then yesterday, I was told the children in my area, children of the squatters in my area, were also in front of my house waiting for shoes. Mm. So this year, roughly, I'm sure we'll share about 2,000. Wow. Though currently, I have shared 1,300, and I have only 200 remaining. The rest, I don't know where I'm going to find it. <laughs> it must be fulfilling doing this. It is, it is. Seeing the joy on the faces of these children. I mean, we all have grown, we, we've all have been children before. And the excitement of Christmas, looking forward to something beautiful. You go to church or, you know, program, you see these children wearing new shoes and, you know, having new clothes and you don't have it. This has a way of affecting you psychologically. We take it for granted, but that spirit of self-pity and lack of confidence and all that, if you're not careful, you grow up with it. And it can affect us in many ways. So we do this to bring smiles to the children. And I make sure I don't allow them to have this sense of um, um, entitlement. I always let them know. And I go out there and ask for people to help me to make them happy this Christmas. So we inculcate in them the spirit of giving themselves, the spirit of hope, new shoes, because I believe as a woman of faith, new shoe symbolizes new uh, paths, new direction. You know, you give these to children and you have the opportunity to talk to them. They look forward to something new, these shoes, every single time and it helps build their confidence and sell a sense of self-worth and love mm. you know love that spirit of where we used to have community helping to bring up children um it's gone 
uh, we want to try to let people understand that we all have a responsibility because that nurse who takes care of you at the hospital, that watches seller, that teacher is coming from somewhere. And if you're not careful, um, these people grow up with a sense of pain, bitterness, sorrow, and it manifests in many ways. Mm. So that's why we do Happy Feet. Mm. That's, that's quite encouraging. And uh, definitely, uh, we want to look at the significance uh, you've been talking about. But what has been the driver for this whole initiative and intervention? I said the joy in the faces of the children, the, the mothers, the appreciation of the mothers, the grandmothers, you know, knowing that because of you, because of the, your supporters, their children come home so excited. Yesterday it was a bit, an interesting incident where normally they come, some of the pictures maybe you see, they leave their old shoes and come for the new one. There was this <laughs> little boy who had a new shoe and we're calling him to come back for his old shoe. He started by <laughs> really weeping that he doesn't want that. I don't know whether he thought we would take the, the new, new shoe one. From him. <laughs> This morning, we had parents coming to tell the children sleeping with the shoes by the, their side, <laughs> some wearing the shoes to bed, and that's always the story. The joy, the excitement on their faces. You know, we had some of the children who are big feet, so unfortunately, they couldn't get some of the shoe. Aww. And their tears, their tears, you know? So next year, maybe I'll have to look at big sizes as well, <laughs> because some of the eight years, nine years back, they wear 41, 42. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, we don't buy much of that. Mm. We concentrate on the little ones. So mm. we have up to 40. And oh, it was heartbreaking seeing them. But majority of them had their sizes. And they're so excited, so happy and singing and, you know, praying for you. And uh. it, it's so heartwarming. And, and it's very heartwarming. I mean, Jopo was something else. There was a video I sent, I don't know. They were singing the song of joy and happy, and it was spontaneous from the children. Nobody killed them. Mepe was also heartwarming. You know, some people think that Mepe, the children get a lot. No. Being the fact that you've been moved from your house, your home you know, to stay somewhere in the bush, in a tent, lying on the floor in a tent or in a mattress nothing nothing can take away that pain that you know that trauma so every little thing to put a smile on their face i i was at the liberian cup when it started years ago i had the opportunity of being in liberia and seeing people living in in sh uh, in shelters and mepe was like that you know that sense of yeah, I'm sure you've been there, Aisha. It, it's, <laughs> I can relate. So the joy, the joy on the faces of the kids. Look at them on the screen. These are, I had some friends coming from the U.S., you know, coming to join Dr. Rubin and Ella and other people um, joining us. And it, it, it's such a, a heartwarming experience to see the joy on the faces of the children. There's always joy in giving, isn't it? Definitely 2,000 yeah. shoes out there. Hopefully next year, a lot more people will support you to donate more my, than my that. My target was 5,000, but I, I said now I have 1,500. Okay. I'm trusting people to donate so we can have at least 2,000 to okay. give to the Ghana Muslim Mission for okay. the Muslim, the children in the... Um, um, Collegono area, and then there's also another camp in a uh, Sawam area. The children can have some, and the children of Scotus in my area too um, can have some as well. If you permit me, can I quickly say thank you to some people who have contributed to go this? Ahead. If it's okay by you. Go, go ahead, Gifty. Okay, thank you so much. So I'd like to say thank you to Great Impact Movement in the US and across the world, Big Hearts Foundation. Sassy Ladies International, Best Deals Shipping International, Image Ghana International, Miss Ghana Foundation, and residents of Manetville, Vena Mineral Water, Ketra Bedu Agrochemicals based in Kumase, 
Restoration Believers in Ministries International, based in UK and Ghana, and every single person, the individuals who have given, we are so, so grateful. But please, we still need some more to give. So please, the number is 598 58668 0598586868 please give to make the feet of some little children across the country very happy this christmas and thank you joy news for this opportunity i'm grateful i'm sure a lot more people are listening to us and definitely do donate more to put smiles on the faces of these little ones so henry gifty auntie thank you so much for the good work and god bless you God oh, bless you too, Aisha. Merry Christmas. Many happy returns. Enjoy your day. <laughs> and let's get to other stories as Ghana joins the rest of the world to celebrate Christmas, marking the joy of the birth of Christ. Many spend the day having a fun time with family and friends. But for orphans living in orphanages, how did they mark the day? My colleague Prince Kodoga spent Christmas Day with orphans at the Porter's Village in Dodowa and came through with the following report. Christmas is a season for merrymaking and family fun time. However, not all people have the opportunity to experience the joy of the festive season, including these orphaned children at the Porter's Village in Dodua. For these children, this year's Christmas is a special one as Sigma Gamma Rio Sorority, a leading women's organization from the United States, spent the Christmas Day with them as part of their Bright Ride journey. I came down to Ghana to support my sorority and its efforts in assisting children that are unfortunate, that are less fortunate than us. Over 250 diasporans with, the Afri with African descent visited Ghana to undertake various philanthropic works. Rashida Liberty is the international president of the Sigma Gamma Rio sorority. So Christmas, when we say that it's a season of giving, a lot of times we give to ourselves or to our families. But I think it's important to have outreach and to give to those that may be in more need than um, what we are. In the U.S., sometimes I believe we're privileged and we take a lot for granted. And that this has helped open our eyes, not only for our members of our sorority, but I've had the privilege of bringing my son and my daughter here as well, just so that they can see what they can continue to do as they grow older in the process. Or grow older in life, they can see and continue to come back and give. The association, in collaboration with the team CSR Ghana, commissioned a six-unit toilet facility, an ICT center, and also donated laptops to students at the Porter's Village. Rashida Liberty handing over the items underscored the need for investment in technological knowledge for young people. So the laboratories are important for especially our young ladies because as they go through their own personal menstruals and things like that, we want them to be able to have clean running water and be able to have the privacy that they need, especially some of the children who have come here at risk. We want them to be in a safe environment and have the things that they need, also for our young men. And then secondly, it is very important that we invest in technology. Why is that the case? Because we know that the country is being, our, our, our world is being impacted by artificial intelligence, machine learning, and we have to make sure that our young people are ready for the future, that they can have jobs in the future, and they understand what's happening to them and ways to give inclusively to technology that's being developed on their behalf. For the management of the Porter's Village, Children in the orphanage must not feel left out in the Christmas celebration, hence they will go all length to make Christmas memorable for them. Nana Ama Eduusu is the managing director of the village. Apart from the parties people have, we ourselves too, with the donations that we receive, we also throw parties. We try to make sure that the children don't feel too different. Sometimes we even buy them the Christmas hats for them to feel that they're also having Christmas. If people bring in dresses, we don't share all at once. We keep some for Christmas. So in this season, you see that they also get new clothes as if a parent, a normal parent, who has gone to buy clothes for their children. So we give them new clothes. We we'll give them Christmas hat if it's possible. People ask us, what do you need? We tell them shoes. So that during this Christmas, they also get new shoes. Then apart from that, we also throw parties for them. We want them to have a normal life like every other person out there with their families. So for the children here at Porter's Village, they may find themselves in this situation, but this cannot stop them from enjoying the season. Prince Kwame Kudogan's report for Joy News. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas.
and a happy new year. Glad a new nursing and midwifery training school has been opened in the Mampurgumoduri district of the northeast region. The new college is the second of its kind and comes 18 years after the first one was opened in Nalerugu. The college is located in Kobori, one of the northernmost tipped communities of the country and is already in session with 200 students. At a deborah of chiefs and people of the district to mark the commissioning of the college, the divisional chief of Kobori expressed profound gratitude for the project whilst appealing to government to adequately provide the needed infrastructure and resources for effective and conducive training of professional nurses and midwives in the school. Correspondent Ilya Satanko has more. The commissioning ceremony was held at the school premises in Kubori and attended by several dignitaries, including representatives of the Wungu traditional area, the regional minister, the member of parliament and the district chief executive. Also present were the regional chairman of the governing party, the regional director of health service, the principal, tutor, students and members of the community. The principal of the college, Timothy Baloni Dut, in his address, expressed enormous gratitude to the stakeholders who ensured the successful establishment of the college. The principal said despite the numerous challenges faced, the college had admitted its first batch of students. For the 2023-2024 academic year, we have admitted 200 students. This comprises of 90 registered general nurses, 55 registered midwifery, and 55 registered public health nurses. I want to caution the students against engaging in deviant behavior and rather stay the heart. Consider yourself very lucky to be admitted into Kukori College of Nursing and Midwifery as pioneers because we are going to give you the best of training. He said the college was faced with challenges such as inadequate infrastructure, lack of means of transport, and poor telecommunication connection. He appealed for those challenges to be addressed. We are therefore appealing to the government and other well wishes to come and assist in the areas of classroom bluff, hostel accommodation for students, and bungalows for staff. The college is appealing to his excellence, the vice president through our hard-working MP, Honorable Mustafa, to support the college with a pickup vehicle and the school bus to enable us carrying out administrative duties effectively. In a speech read on his behalf, the chief of Kubori also sang the praises of the vice president as well as other political leaders in the region. The chief also added his voice to the call on the government to prioritize the development of the college. Accommodation for staff and students is very critical. And so are classroom blocks. Regional minister has assured me something will be done next year to alleviate this problem. Extra boho to supply water, especially during dry season, will be helpful. Bad news, we need a speedy completion of Uyima Bridge. The Member of Parliament expressed his excitement and assured the college will be given the needed attention. We started the project just like we have seen today, but we have a very big plan for this college. There is a comprehensive plan that we have brought for this college. And as we journey together, we will see the infrastructure development that we are going to bring here. His Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Dr. Alhaj Mahmoud Baumia, has assured me that he's not going to let this college, he's going to support us to ensure that we get all the necessary infrastructure for this college. Regional Minister Yidana Zakari commended the Minister of Health and the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission for facilitating the establishment of the college. Mr. Yidana added that the new college will contribute to an increase in the number of qualified applicants from the region seeking to study nursing and midwifery programs. Ladies and gentlemen, the Minister of Health and the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission deserves our sincere appreciation for facilitating the establishment of this college is the second in the Northeast region. With the establishment of this college, there certainly will be an increase in the number of qualified applicants.
applicants from the region who are desirous of pursuing programs in nursing, midwifery, and the allied health sciences. The minister also responded to the appeals made by the principal of the college and the chief of Kobori for the development of the new college. We are going to benefit from a number of boroughs in the region. So come the early part of 2024, we shall be sinking a minimum of two boroughs in the school year. <laughs> Classroom accommodation. As we come the day to commission the school and the buildings, we shall also be cutting saw for the construction of additional classrooms today. That tells you that the commitment on the part of government has never been in doubt and will never be. More tutors want to assure the principal, given that we are going to do recruitment next year, this school shall be considered so that you get the right caliber of professionals recruited for teaching and learning to go on. From Kubari for Joy News, Ilias Sotanko reporting. Back here in Accor in the studio, my name is Aisha Ibrahim. Let's head to the Setra East District where the Health Directorate is calling for public collaboration and addressing rising cases of neglected tropical diseases. The District Health Director who made the call, Dr. Justice Oferia Moa, emphasized the urgent need for external assistance to effectively control and manage the cases. He spoke at the launch of the fight against neglected tropical diseases at Ifijiasa in the Ashanti region. Mahmoud Mohamed Nouradine has more. Senior Director Kassan Okan said, what is being neglected now? You are too sad in your way at the jail. And you have been a COVID-19. Oh, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. Neglected tropical diseases, NTDs, are a group of 20 viral, parasitic, and bacterial diseases, primarily afflicting over 1 billion individuals among the world's most marginalized populations. According to health authorities, Ghana is grappling with 14 NTDs with each district across the country documenting the presence of at least two of the diseases. Edward Tay is a chief biomedical scientist at the Neglected Tropical Diseases Program. Ghana has 14 neglected tropical diseases and every district in the country has at least two of the diseases. In 2023 alone, the Setra East District has reported 2,471 instances of scabies, 22 cases of lymphatic filariasis, 55 cases of youngs, and 5 cases of leprosy. Sadly, there have been 7 deaths among children due to rabies cases. Now let's hear from the District Director of Health Services, Dr. Justice Ofori Amwa. Setra East has so far recorded about 2,000 471 cases of scabies for the year 2023. We have recorded seven deaths associated with rabies. We have also recorded 55 cases of yours. We have also put five cases of leprosy on treatment. And the cases are reporting and reporting. Again, we have about 22 cases of lymphatic filariasis. What we are preaching and saying to the general public is the early reporting of any suspected case to the nearest health facility for case management. What might explain the higher number of cases in comparison to the previous year? Dr. Justice says, Since the last three years, the figures keep increasing. All is because the World Vision supported us in case search. The Women's Hope Foundation also supported us in case search. And the more we search, the more we get. It means that the cases are in the communities. So the best we can do is to go out there, talk to people, 
for all to report any case that they see that looks abnormal to them. Then we will now classify that this is leprosy, this is scabies, this is lymphatic filariasis. And with this, again, we are able to eliminate the disease from the district. The incidence of these diseases has had a detrimental impact on the economic and social well-being of residents, particularly affecting school-going children and farmers. Dr. Nana Ayu Afriye, the member of parliament for Efidiasi Asakori constituency who launched the campaign, has affirmed that his office will persist in aiding the district health services to oversee and address the situation. Preventable, it can be treated early stage looking for the case, the official case, you know. Capacity building, say a bit training. The diseases are preventable and can be treated. Capacity building for health personnel is crucial. So I have looked for the money for all this. Around the name is I look for the money. And I write out one. I looked for the money. And I have looked for it. So we can start our campaign with what we have now. Chiefs, opinion leaders, politicians, teachers and residents are urged to collaborate with the health directorate in identifying, treating and monitoring cases of neglected tropical diseases. This call to action was emphasized by Dr. Justice Thomas, the Municipal Director of Health Services for Achuman Wabinja District and the National Chairman for the District Directors Group. That there are three things to be done if we want to get anywhere on this particular matter and that is to search to treat and to track if you don't look you can't find and if you want to find something of interest you must look out for it the World Health Organization advocates five fundamental strategic interventions to expedite the prevention, control, elimination and eradication of neglected tropical diseases. These include innovative and intensified disease management, preventive chemotherapy, vector control, veterinary public health, provision of safe water, sanitation and hygiene. A report by Mohamed Nuruddin. We're still live on Joy News Desk. We're coming to you from our studio in Kokom Lemle on the fan of our streets. Let's take a break when we return. There's business for you. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the business segment on Joy News Desk with me, Pius Kojo Baka. Provident Insurance Limited Ghana has launched the Bibia Bibia campaign with a WhatsApp assistant dubbed the Obaya app. According to the company, this is to create convenience for its clients and customers across the country. Speaking to Joy Business at the launch, Chief Executive Officer of the company, Michael Justice Ashom, said the move is to improve on the company's technological drive for growth. Ghanaians can buy vehicle insurance, renew existing vehicle insurance, file claims, and do more with the new Obaya WhatsApp assistant platform. Provident Insurance said this is to create convenience for its customers. We launched the Obaya app this morning. It is intended to provide convenience for our clients. In today's uh, economy that wherever you're going, you must make yourself ready to be in traffic for a very long time. We want to create a good level of convenience for our clients so that wherever they are and at any time that they want to do their insurance, they can easily go on a buyer and be able to do their insurance. The Obaya app enables you to go onto WhatsApp to buy insurance for your new vehicle. It enables you to renew your existing insurance and it also enables you to make claims. So even after you have done your insurance and something happens to your vehicle and you want to make a claim for whatever damage, um, has been caused to your vehicle, you can also go on Obaya to make that claim. And we have even, we've even made it possible that your claims can be paid directly into your bank account. 
so that you don't even need to move from your house if you have to make a claim. For over 40 years, Providence Insurance has been a trusted insurance provider, helping Ghanaians protect their cherished property, businesses, and more with a range of top-notch plans. Multi-Choice Ghana has reiterated the company's commitment to providing content and services to meet the needs and demands of customers, according to the head of corporate communications of Multi-Choice Ghana, Ni Ahmad Dagadu. The move is to provide good local offerings to its customers. He spoke to Joy Business at the 30th anniversary Thanksgiving service. At the 30th anniversary Thanksgiving service, Multi-Choice Ghana said it is poised to continue to give good content and services to its customers across the country and beyond. The company maintained that it will continue to invest in Ghana's film and art industry, which will positively impact the country's economy. Right, 2023 has been quite an interesting year for us. We've had to contend with the general economic conditions. But um, we're very thankful that we've been here 30 years. And being a Ghanaian company, we've been able to weather the storm like every other Ghanaian um, has done throughout the year. We've kept the promise with our customers. We've introduced some new products. Just a few weeks ago, we introduced the GoTV stream product, which will allow GoTV customers to watch TV on the go, something our DSTV customers have had for a long time. We're also able to introduce the um, Showmax, um, the standalone product. We've also introduced the DSTV stream, um, via streaming service so that you don't even require a dish for your DSTV anymore, making it more affordable and much easier for customers to be able to enjoy our services. But what we, this evening you witnessed our Thanksgiving service, so we're extremely grateful to our customers, our supporters, our stakeholders, and all our clients who have worked with us over the last 30 years. The nice thing going into 2024, every month in 2024, we will launch a new film on the Aquaba Magic Channel. And that's it for business. I am Pius Kojubaka. More after this break. And before we go, today is the biggest family party in Ghana and in West Africa. It's the family party in the park at the Ibri Botanical Gardens. You just need 200 cities for a ticket uh, for six family members. You could go with your mom, dad, children, aunties, cousins. I mean, every member of the family you can take with you. Six members, 200 cities, and you have your ticket. Don't forget there's the daddy's corner, and there's also going to be a mommy's corner, actually. So, of course, you need to go have fun. Then Kwampa Band will be there. Kwabina Kwabina is going to feature. Ifia is going to be there. Kitty will be there. Of course, is the biggest party in Ghana today, and you definitely don't want to miss out. It starts at 10 a.m. It's already started. If you haven't been there, just start making your way to the Abri Botanical Gardens. We, we have food, drinks, everything sorted at the Abri Botanical Gardens. You just don't want to miss this. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Log on to myjohnline.com. There's more you will find, uh, and all the developing uh, new stories, you'll be finding them on myjoyonline.com. See you again at 12.